Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. In less than two weeks, the Sentinel 2A satellite is scheduled to be shipped from IABG in Munich to Europe's spaceport in French Guiana ahead of its targeted launch on June 12th. A while ago, I got a chance to see the satellite in the clean room in Munich and speak with some of the key players in the Sentinel-2 mission about its payload and applications. Let's take a look. We're here today at IABG in Munich and behind us is the Sentinel-2A satellite. And with me is Francois Spoto, who is the project manager, and Omar C, who is the system engineering and operations manager. Can you begin by telling me a bit about the satellite, what we see behind us? How big is it? How much does it weigh? Well, the satellite is 1.1 uh, ton to start with a mass. Its dimension is basically 3.3 meters tall. Uh, over 1.6 meters and 2.2. But this is without the solar array, because on the side underneath there, if the solar array is completely deployed, it will add another 4.2 meters to the, to the width. And the side that we're looking at here is the side that will be facing Earth? Correct, that's, that's exactly Earth facing, and uh, this is a flight path. And well, it, you have to imagine a little bit, but uh, with a solar array on the side, and the sun on the other side, and this is facing, let's say, deep space. And of course, the main instrument is at the top, if I understand correctly. Francois, can you tell me a bit about this main instrument? What are its applications? Yes, so the main instrument is called the multispectral instrument. It took about six years to develop, integrate, test, and calibrate. It's a 300 kilogram of hardware, and it is equipped with two a point of observation, which we call focal plane. Uh, what is really special about that instrument is it's capable to image over a 300 kilometers width uh, simultaneously with 13 spectral channels. It's like basically being able to capture at the same time 13 different nuances of colors to give a very rich uh, uh, imaging uh, capability to the payload. Now, this instrument is mainly dedicated uh, to the observation of uh, land emerging masses, among which we will focus really at crops and at forestry. Uh, those being important basically to uh, control the resources of vegetation which are uh, on earth and is directly linked to the control of food and uh, to the food supply to the uh, growing population on earth. Now, those spectral channels allow not only to make images, of course, but to extract from the vegetation the geophysical quantities which are important to master uh, the optimal growth of the agricultural uh, uh, elements like uh, chlorophyll, water concentration, senescence of leaves. So all that is part of the mission of Sentinel-2. But there are many other side uh, uh, observation objectives as well, like coastal areas, which are the most inhabited areas uh, for the human beings on the planet, uh, inhabited zones and their uh, intermix with the vegetation areas as well. Uh, so this observatory is basically dedicated to land emerging masses in a very, very wide sense. And what makes this instrument and the Sentinel-2 mission unique? Alors, what is really unique about the instrument is at the same time it has a very rich uh, spectral coverage, 13 bands. It covers a swath, meaning a sort of span of observation of close to 300 kilometers and the spatial resolution goes down to 10 meters. So this all together is completely unprecedented and delivers, just to give you an idea, 1300 uh, megabits per second at uh, the data generated by the payload instrument, which is why basically we have 1.6 terabyte of data to be processed in the ground segment on ground, just to restitute the image that this observatory will be able to capture on a daily basis. Now, of course, this is not the only instrument on the satellite. There's also a laser terminal. Where is that and what is that? A uh, laser terminal is on top of the satellite. You can see it from here. And it is in complement to the X-band, which is the main transmission subsystem for the mission data. So it is actually relaying data via a geostationary uh, satellite, which is most of the time visible. And it can actually enable us to to transmit a big volume of data in a very short time. This is basically its uh, function on board. Okay. Now, how about orienting the satellite? I understand there are, there are also star trackers on board. In the nominal mode of the satellite, once everything has been stabilized, it's using mainly the reaction wheel. So the thrusters are no longer used to basically to not consume too much fuel, which is very, very important for a long duration of the whole mission. 
and it uses in conjunction with that a uh, star tracker and uh, a fiber gyro, which is one of the uh, most advanced ones, it's Asterix 200, which usually is not used on a LEO satellite, but in this case, due to the geolocation stringent requirement of the MSI, they have been both mounted very close to the instrument, and these ones measure act actually the rates and the attitude of the spacecraft, which is in conjunction with the reaction wheel, destabilizing the whole spacecraft and keeping it on its uh, pl flight path and in orbit. It's only when one has to change altitude of the spacecraft or completely maneuvers to avoid uh, collisions, in that case thrusters are being used, and at the end of life for the orbiting. Omar and Francois, thank you so much for your time. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space and about our planet, visit our website at www.isa.int.